cleverly joins us. He's now the new Secretary of State for Education. Good morning. I don't, I don't know if congratulations are in order, are they? Because you must have accepted this new job knowing it was only going to last, what, six, eight weeks or so? Well, look, being Secretary of State for Education is a fantastic job. We were reminded during the COVID disruptions just how important education is to all of us, not just young people, but all of us. It is a fantastic job. None of us in politics know how long we're going to be in ministerial appointments, but for as long as I'm in the job, I will throw all my energy at it. There are some important decisions we need to make over the summer, and it's a privilege to serve. So um, thank you for congratulating me on my appointment, and as I say, I will give it all my energy for as long as I'm in the role. What was it like walking in the department for the first time? Because, um, I mean, there's hardly anyone there, is there? That, and presumably the civil servants have just been keeping things ticking over whilst ministers and aides all around them have been quitting. Well, uh, when I stepped into the department, I had an incredibly warm welcome. Obviously, there's been a lot of turbulence and disruption at ministerial level in the department, but we have fantastic officials and of course the leadership in the education sector around the country are incredibly uh, professional as well. The Prime Minister has been making ministerial appointments. Uh, he appointed Will Quint back into the department, a very well liked, very professional, very experienced minister. So he's come back to the department yesterday and I know the Prime Minister will be making other ministerial appointments. So we've hit the ground running. I spoke to union leaders and others yesterday. I'll be continuing to work with the profession and my officials uh, and the new ministerial team as they're appointed. Hey, look, we are going to, you know, whether people like it or not, and it's a 50-50 it's a split maybe amongst our viewers and listeners this morning, we are going to have a new Prime Minister by, well, probably the start of September. Um, will you throw your hat into the ring as you have done once before or can you rule that out? So I, I'm not going to be putting myself uh, forward. Uh, look, being Prime Minister is a fantastic job. We have a wonderful range of candidates, um, some of whom have declared, some have yet to declare, but we suspect they might. My personal circumstances mean that I won't be putting myself uh, forward. Um, but I'm also confident that we have a pool of talent which will enable us to choose someone uh, with fantastic experience, whoever that might be, and then deliver on what we are all in government to do which is serve the British people. We know who the likely runners and riders are then, who are throwing their hats into the ring. Who are you likely to support? <laughs> I, uh, I'm, not going to make, I'm not going to make any uh, announcements about who I might support uh, at the moment. We haven't seen who is going to be running yet. So I want to I want to make sure that what I do personally reflects what we're doing as a process, which is to make sure it's professional, but also to make make sure it's discharged uh, quickly. But I'll be waiting until I see the full slate uh, before deciding who I'm going to support. I'll tell you what is reassuring, uh, Minister, is that, you know, you, here you are on TV this morning and on radio, you're sounding very calm, very considered. It, it inspires confidence. That's all good. But it comes after what has been the most unedifying couple of days. I mean, that has got to have done some damage to politics, to government, to the Conservative Party, surely. Well, look, uh, thank you for the first half of that question. I think if you'd stopped there, I'd have been very, very happy. But <laughs> you are right that the, the, the events of this week ha have been you know, completely unprecedented. Um, global politics is turbulent. I think uh, in the UK, we'd always been very proud of the fact that we had much calmer uh, politics. But frankly, from the day I was elected in 2015, as we went through the, uh, the uh, referendum on our membership of the European Union, then the hung parliament, then the delivery of Brexit, now this, it has been incredibly turbulent. I think a period of calmness is something that we would all enjoy. That's what I'm going to work towards. And I have no doubt that whoever becomes Prime Minister in the forthcoming weeks will also want to bring a degree of calm to the British political scene. And finally, your views on whether Boris Johnson should stay in the Premiership 
during the election of another uh, another leader? Should he stay where he is? Yes, look, he has announced that he is leaving. Um, that has meant that a lot of people who had said that he needed to go and had left government now feel comfortable coming back into government. Uh, he has said that the timescale for his departure will be defined by the 1922 committee and the party as we go through this process. We do need to have a process, that is important, but it also needs to be professional and quick. Um, and once a successor has been chosen, the Prime Minister will stand down and hand over. And I think that is the most, uh, I, I think that's the most pragmatic, professional and least disruptive way of doing it.